typically depositors around two to three percent they decide to move uh, their cash from side deposit so overnight basically checking account to time deposits or in money markets options and as the ECB is now 375 and probably going around four it's leading to some cash moving and transformation now the cash though in Europe is not leaving the banking system that's a big difference so it's being reintermediated in time deposits and sometimes in asset management product the money market offering in Europe is not as strong and if you look at overall at the European banking system there has been basically zero deposit outflow in the US is different and that's where the problem lies secondly in Europe every bank above uh, you know 30 billion euro in assets is regulated like JP Morgan while in the US uh, anyone below 250 was pretty much left unchecked which is where all the problems have emerged so I think Europe is safer stronger cheaper and in a way there's less asset bubble hence anywhere you look at Europe maybe with the exclusion of Scandinavia and Germany where there is a bit of real estate bubble elsewhere you can probably sleep um, holding assets in Europe at this point in time in a way Europe sold off in conjunction with the US the structure is totally different nothing to do with it and to be honest the European banking system have happened in the you know early part of the last decade and so do you remember when we had problems with Cyprus Maltese uh, Spanish, Portuguese, Irish banks, German banks, and then 10, 15 years of healing puts now the banking system in Europe on a much stronger footing. Thanks a lot to the ECB and the SSM work, to be honest. Uh, Davide, nice to see you today. So there's a lot in what you said there, but you, you kind of preempted one of my questions with your last comment about Scandinavia and Germany. We, we, we can't just discount Scandinavia and Europe's largest economy as everywhere's fine apart from those two countries. If Germany goes down, it's going to take down a lot of um, banks across Europe in terms of their holdings of CRE and, and real estate, isn't it? Well, listen, going down, it's a big sentence uh, because the issue is you need to look how much equity there is on those that invested. So certainly the real estate sector, it's hot in Scandinavia and in Germany. But it's as hot equal to the US, Canada, Australia, UK. So to be honest, it's the only part of the world uh, where, in a way, asset prices have risen as much as all the other Anglo-Saxon countries. Um, hence, I don't think we are talking uh, any more risk vis-a-vis -vis Canada, Australia, UK or the US. So that's certainly the part that is, in a way, more exposed to that area. In Germany, in particular, there are a couple of medium to small lenders uh, which are specialized in CRE and they have more exposure. Um, but you know, if you look overall at the system, um, you know, CRE exposure for regional banks is 45%, Europe aggregate less than 7%. So we're talking at a totally different magnitude here. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.